Okay, so I am going to attempt to make a Dollar Tree wreath. Um, I made the mistake of going into Dollar Tree with no game plan. So I ended up buying way too much. So I'm not gonna use all of this, but I wanted to have some options. So I'm just gonna show you a few things that I got and then we'll try to figure out um, what kind of wreath we're gonna make. So I got the circular wreath. I got a bunch of florals. These are actually like really pretty, like for Dollar Tree. So those are pretty. I got some, what are these called? They're not called that. They're called like, I don't know, pipe fitters? I don't know what they're called. But I know I need these to like help me put stuff on the roof. So I got a package of those. So I got two of these nautical rope things. And I think I'm going to wrap the reef wire in this. We'll see. Got a couple of those. I got a little selection of ribbon. This is really pretty for Easter, spring. Got a plain purple. And then I got this little carrot one. And then they only had one left of the decorative mesh. I wish they would have had more. So that's why I'm probably gonna use the rope as um, like the base of the wreath instead of using like a deco mesh one. So we'll see. And then I just got a couple of random things to kind of stick in the wreath. So I think my plan is to maybe cut these little rabbits off, the little headbands and stick them in the wreath somehow. And then this was a really cute little garland. Um, I don't know if you can see, there you go. So my thought was maybe to cut some of these flowers off and stick them on there. I don't know, we'll see. And then lastly, I wanted to show you, I got this little um, Easter egg tray. Now I don't, I mean, I don't know if this is like for Easter eggs, but my plan is to put um, my decorative boiled eggs that I did in my last video um, on here, and I'm gonna make them for Easter. And it's a really cute tray for $1.25. All right, so let's see what we can do. Okay, so I did decide to use the rope as the base for my wreath. So I just took a hot glue gun and press the end onto the um, wire wreath. And then you're just gonna wanna take your time and wrap it really tight. And then whenever you get to the end of the rope, just hot glue that piece down and continue on with the rest of the ropes. Okay, so I finished wrapping my wreath with the rope and I did have to go back and get a couple of more ropes. So it did take a total of four and I still have this little space open, but I'm not worried about that because we're gonna cover that up with all the florals and the ribbon and stuff like that. But it came out pretty good. I think from far away, it's gonna look great. Um, on the back, you can kind of see where I hot glued um, the edges. Okay, so next I um, probably did the hardest part of the, the whole wreath, which is making the bow. I am terrible at making bows, so I will link the um, YouTube video that I watched that showed me how to make this simple bow. It actually was pretty easy. Um, it just takes some practice and time, but I would definitely go click on that video because she explains how to do it a lot better than I could. Um, but I think it came out pretty good overall. Just make sure you secure it really tightly and we're going to put that aside and add that to the wreath towards the end.
Okay, so now that we have our beautiful bow set aside, I'm going to just kind of show you all the florals that I decided to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the flowers off of the um, main stem. And we're going to kind of break them up and make two separate little bouquets. Um, and you'll just kind of see me do that here. And there's no, you know, rhyme or reason to what I did. I just kind of played around with it until I, it came out how I wanted it to. So now that we have our two floral bouquets, we're just going to secure them um, to that little open spot on our wire wreath. I did one facing up and then I did the other bouquet facing downward and then I just put the bow in the middle. Um, so just secure it really tightly. You won't really see um, the little chenille stems from the back so I wouldn't worry about that but if they bother you can always clip them off. And lastly, I just took um, those bunny headbands and just popped the bunnies off um, of the little headband part. And I just used my hot glue gun to put them into the wreath. I didn't have any, um, I don't know, bright ideas on how to secure them. So that's what I did and it seemed to work out just fine. So I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but I am seriously impressed with how this came out. And I believe it was all under about $15. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I am putting in my 10 month old's very first, obviously, Easter basket. I'm very excited. Um, he has no idea, will not know what an Easter basket is, um, doesn't know anything about Easter, doesn't know what's going on, but I don't care because I do. So first I'm going to show you the actual Easter basket that I bought him. So I got the, um, I don't know what exactly what it's called, but I'll link it below, but it's from Pottery Barn. Um, the handle kind of swivels up and down, which is nice. And then I also bought the liner personalized to go with it and I will say I am pretty disappointed in the liner um I don't know it's like super wrinkly it's linen which I knew would wrinkle but I tried to iron it out you can't and then I feel like the monogram is like too um taunt is that the right word 
I don't know, but you can just tell it's like pulling on the fabric. So I don't know, I wouldn't recommend getting the liners. Maybe they have some different ones that turn out better, but it'll do for this year. All right, so there's the basket. And then to fill the basket, I just bought some of the um, crinkle paper from Target. And I got the green, light blue, and yellow. And these were, yeah, a dollar a piece. So I got those to fill it. Um, so I'm not gonna go in any particular order. I kinda got like random stuff at random places. So I guess we'll start first with the bubble bath. So um, he's kind of been fussy in the baths lately. So I was like, well, maybe we should give him some bubble bath, but he has super sensitive skin. So I was scared to get like, you know, Mr. Bubble, cause I don't know what's all in that. But I've used Puracy brand before for like um, body wash and hand wash. And it's supposed to be like super clean, gentle, hypoallergenic. Well, I saw they had a bubble bath and this is lavender and vanilla. Um, so we're gonna try that out. I'll order that online, I'll link it below. So I got a bubble bath and to go with that, where is it? So I just bought him this little sponge. At first I thought it was a rabbit, but now looking at it, I think it might be a dog. I don't know, it's cute. But I got this at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Correction, a dollar twenty-five. So just a little cute little sponge. Um, next up we have a little Peter Rabbit. And I got this, I'm pretty sure, at Walmart. I don't know how much it was. But you pull the tail and it, you know, it vibrates and like walks, I guess, across the floor. But it's cute, little Peter Rabbit. I also got him some of these organic strawberry pick me sticks. So I've been trying all kind of finger foods and he's just not having it. I don't know. Something's wrong because I love to eat. Like I live to eat and like the doctor said, he eats to live, which I just can't understand. But I do know he loves these, so I just got him an extra pack. They're baby bellies. I got these at Walmart. They're puffed corn snacks for mini mouths and fingers. Organic and non-GMO. Um, age and stage appropriate, not sweetened or salted. So there's a little pack of those. Um, let's see. Okay, so I just got back from Colorado to visit my brother and sister-in-law and nephew, and we went to Ikea, which just um, a little summary of Ikea. I think it might be my new favorite place ever. I don't know, it was just like next level fun for me. Well, while we were there, I found these little um, finger puppets, and the night before, I had actually bought him a finger puppet, at this like little boutique store and I paid seven dollars for this one finger puppet and at Ikea I think these were five dollars for ten so I felt a little dumb but I'm glad I came across these because he like loves finger puppets like loves when I like do all this in front of his face so we got a little pack of those um next we have some books so we read probably I read a book to him at least at every nap and at bedtime, so it's probably ends up being about three or four books a day. Um, we love the Pout Pout Fish. I don't know if he loves it, but I love the Pout Pout Fish, and they had a Happy Easter Pout Pout Fish. So I got him that little book, Llama Llama Easter Egg, because I really like the Llama Llama Red Pajama book. That one's really cute. That one, and then of course the classic, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And I'll link all those below. I think I got those at Target, but I mean, you can get them everywhere. I think Target was having like a buy to get one free or something like that. But anyway, they're probably not having that anymore. Um, next up, I got the egg rattle set. So it's just like some little eggs and you shake them and they make music. And I got these at Target. Those are really cute and festive. Okay, so if you watch um, Songs for Littles, which is Miss Rachel on YouTube, 
then you're probably familiar with this, but um, we love Miss Rachel. And she she's like a, a kids YouTuber channel, but she's like educational. So I feel better about him watching that. Well, she does um, the Peekaboo Learning Farm and they had this um, at Target. So I was like, well, let me get him that. So while we're watching Miss Rachel, we can do it too. So it's just like a little set of barns that are different colors that have numbers and little animals. So it helps them learn. Now it says for 18 month plus, but I like to think that Griff is advanced. So we're gonna start a little early. So there's that. Okay, for clothes, I got him, um, I'll start with the swimsuit first. So I got him this little um, rash guard, so cute. So last um, summer, I mean, he was obviously like a super tiny infant and we went to the beach and it was a nightmare. And regardless, he wore this swimsuit like one time, but I like really liked it. It was like really good fabric. Um, they have really cute, simple designs. And so I was like, well, I'm just gonna get them another one from the same place. So I got this at primary.com. And last year I had bought him like a little sun hat to go with his swimsuit, but he didn't really get a chance to wear it and it was too big. And it was this like lime green color. So I was like, well, let me get this one so it'll match his little hat. So that's his little rash scarf for this year. And at the same store, um, I got this little one piece romper, simple green button up, snaps at the bottom. And then at Walmart, they had this cute little onesie romper, same thing, snaps at the bottom. And this was only $8.98, so that's cute. And to go with all of that, I bought these little sandals that he'll probably not wear because they're not really functional, but they're really cute. But these were from Walmart too. And I just thought these were so cute. So these were $13.98, they're kind of expensive, but cute. Okay, and lastly, um, so this is not gonna fit into his Easter basket, but we're gonna put it on the side, um, but it's for Easter. So I got him a Splish Splash Water Park. So it's like a, um, it's like a little backyard splash pad. Cause we need to start getting outside and it has a little slide and it has like, I don't know, some inflatable fun stuff. And I found this had Academy. I think it was, it was less than $35, which is probably still too much to pay for a splash pad, but we need some things to do. So, so that's it. That's everything that is in Griff's first Easter basket. And I'm so excited to open it for him. So hopefully this gave you a few ideas for your Easter basket.